Hello, since I just got back from a weekend away, I wanted to show you how I pack um, and what I pack. So many people ask, what do you take for supplies when you travel? So here is exactly what I have in my suitcase. I have this sketchbook, which is the one I'm um, doing abstracts in right now. So it's a Strathmore watercolor paper. There's a hard cover and um, there's a soft cover. I saw the soft cover the other day and I thought, hmm, I might have to get that one. But I think for travel, the hard protects the papers better. And this is the spread that I posted that I did at the pool. Well, I had started it, but I finished it at the pool in Key West. And then this is palette paper. It comes in lots of different brands. I have a link to it on my website with the rest of these supplies under SuzanneAllard.com and then you go to resources and then there's books or supplies. So palette paper is uh, just a really handy thing to have. It's shiny on one side and of course I keep, I, yes, I cut these in half sometimes. I've been doing that lately because I fold them and I'll use one side and then use the other side. And the great thing about them is they also double as um, being able to slide them in here so that, you know, if I'm painting to the edge, I'm not mucking up the pages behind. So usually when I'm painting a spread, I'll take a couple sheets of this, slide them in there, and then I've got another one that I've folded in half, like these, these are all the ones I took on the trip. And you can use this as palette, and then it's once it's all done, you can flip it and use the other side it'll end up, or you can cut them in half. I've been doing that lately uh, as well. So that's the palette paper and the sketchbook part of it. And then I picked these up because you know um, some of the nicer hotels will have these really spongy paper towels in the bathroom and you need a paper towel when you're painting. So um, I go to the bathroom usually at the hotel and get some of these. And then, or if you, they only have the cheaper ones, that's fine too. And then there's always a cup in your hotel room, a plastic cup. Or I'll go to the restaurant and ask for a cup for water. And then I made this sort of travel thing out of a free priority box from the post office. I took the um, this one, or there's one called medium packages, and I just cut the sides out of it so that it's flat. And I put tape on three sides. And then in here is where I have larger pieces of paper if I feel like doing something like that. Sometimes I end up taking this and I don't even get to um, the larger works. I just, you know, busy and the sketchbook is so easy. And But I'll take something like this that, you know, is not quite done, although I think it's pretty close, that, you know, I might want to, um, tinker with. This one was just an experiment and I'm going to do some more things to it so I brought that along and then this so this is one of those sheets I could actually I packed two of them of that paper new paper that I'm obsessed with there's a link to it in my also in my supplies it's handmade cotton paper but what I've done to get ready for travel is I've already gessoed the surface the reason that I gesso, you don't have to, if you want to have kind of a true watercolor experience with your painting the way, you know, and have it soak into the paper, then you wouldn't gesso. But since I'm using, you know, I'm get going for this kind of um, layered, textured effect, if I like gesso because it makes all the, all the paint that I do sit on top of the paper. And what happens is, especially if I'm using, you know, paints like these um, aqua gouache, if I start just painting on, for the effect that I want, again, if I just start putting these on plain paper, they just soak right in. And I just don't get that feeling of layering. And I use more paint because it just keeps soaking in. And so it totally depends on what you want to do. If you're doing something more like these, these pages are not gessoed. 
um, just to give you an idea. None of these are gesso. This is work that's just painted right on the watercolor paper. So let me see if I have another example. If I use something like, here's a few examples. So on this one, I don't think, I don't think I gessoed, but I think I remember thinking I should have. And this one I did not gesso because I wanted that kind of soaked in. Um, yeah, this is one that I didn't gesso, and it was, it was just soaking in, and I, I, I wished I had. And on this one I did not. So it seems to be that the more kind of um, paintings that are, let's see, I'm going to say it looks to me like what I'm doing is when they're looser, like this, okay, let me separate these. I don't want to confuse you even more. All right, let's do it. I think what I do is, it's all by feel, but when they're this kind of painting, this kind of loose um, sort of uh, fauvist, you know, I don't know if you know about fauvism, but the kind of impressionist, expressionist kind of thing, then I'm gessoing. If it's more um, like this, sort of flatter and maybe modern in a way, then I'm not gessoing. Okay, I hope that... <laughs> Didn't confuse you anymore, even more. But, all right, so that's with the paper. So I did on this trip, because that's what I'm into. And, and I've got this to do my flat work, and this to do my more textured work. So I also took just some regular paper, and I had just of these. So these were all ready to go. And I always take, you know, I didn't even get to these, like I said, because I didn't. We were on vacation. But I never want to feel like I don't have enough to do what I want to do. So I pack a few of these pieces of paper, and I think um, so that the palette paper didn't get messed up, I also packed it in here with the paper. So this all went, in fact, I'm gonna put it back because I'm going to visit my parents in a couple of days, and I'm gonna take this same kit. So that goes there, and then I had taped this down like so. This is just that yellow, frog tape that I use for um, the edges of paintings. Uh, but yeah, so this one in my suitcase, I think I carried this with me. It just depends what I have room for. Otherwise, I'll put it all in the suitcase. All right, let's talk about paint um, and brushes. Now, depending on the trip, you can see I just threw the brushes in here, which is pretty, usually I don't do that. I think I was in a hurry. I usually find a way to protect them, um, so, and it is better. So, but it can literally be something like, you know, a paper towel, or I'll take a um, Ziploc bag and I'll wrap it. But something like this, um, and then I'll fold it to allow plenty of room for the little bristles, and then just do something like this, and then put it in the bag. Um, I did take you know, me and my gold pens. I have the three sizes. Uh, these are also on my website under supplies. And depending on how much time I think I'm going to have or, you know, how much am I really going to get to play with art, I'll decide on which ones to take. For this one, this little weekend trip, I just took this. Now, this is a great, travel is a great time to force yourself and experiment with a limited palette. I didn't need all these colors, but I'll show you what I take when I really, you know, I wouldn't, I don't, I didn't really even need to take all of these, but you definitely want your primary colors. Um, so I have a new class on color uh, mixing success that's on Skillshare right now, but it is coming to my a la carte um, class students, and it talks about the two sets of primary colors and also, you know, mixing. So we were always taught, or I was always taught, your red, blue, and yellow, right? Those are your primary colors. They make all other colors. Well, it's not really true. 
if you, you just try it, if you just take a red and a yellow and a blue, you can get um, a lot of colors, you can. But you're not gonna get a lot of the colors I like. Um, so what I do is I take these, which are the primary, and then I take what some people call modern primary colors, but they will get you to the colors I like and they'll get you to colors that you cannot make. And you also, you can't make, a, it's hard to make a turquoise from these. Actually, you can't, you'd have to use a lemon yellow. You might, you could get pretty close with these. And then magenta is really hard to make. You're not, you're, try as you might, you're not gonna be able to take a red like this and a blue like this and make a magenta. So, the most essential, like if you want to like say minimal, minimal, it would be these three and these three. I mean, actually you could just put, travel with these three. Um, so the, the original primaries, new modern primaries, and then I have my bits of favorite ones that I just like to take. Of course, you have to have white, and I always, I always use more white than anything. And then these are just my personal favorites um, right now. Well, I always have an opera pink or red. That's where I get those bright in mixing. It brightens pretty much anything. This too, I mean, yes, you can make this. You can make this with a lemon yellow and a blue, but it's just a great color, so I usually bring it along. Same thing, I talk about this in my color mixing class. You can make ivory, but it's a pain. So I bring it, and then my dark is, a fa my favorite dark is a navy blue or indigo. Coral is also, you can make it with, you know, red, yellow, and then add some magenta, but again, I bring it. And um, this is just a fun color. You, you definitely don't need to bring it. So, yeah, you you know you could you could travel with as few as really these these three primaries, a navy and a white, and that would be a really good exercise to see what you the colors you can create, and it will help you learn to get better at color mixing. But you can see that I threw a few more in. As far as brushes, let's look at the brushes. So I usually bring one. Um, these are sometimes, this is, says chisel blender, but often they're called brights. And I like to paint with the edge of them and this way and this way. So I bring one of those. Then I bring a round, a couple of rounds, a four or five or six. You don't really need both of these. And then a smaller round for details and to make lines. And yeah, so as far as if I bring a Posca, like if I'm, let's say I'm traveling to Europe and I need like all my favorite babies, uh, or a longer trip, doesn't have to be Europe, then I probably will bring a few Poscas and I'll bring the bigger gold pens. Um, I might bring, I might bring a larger round, but probably not. You can do a lot with this. Uh, let's see, what would I bring? I don't know that I, I might bring a couple. I've traveled with a few of my Neo Color crayons. Yeah, I definitely went. So if I'm going on a longer trip and I don't want to be away from my babies <laughs> too long, then I will pack a few oil pastel colors in it, you know, some of my favorites and a few Neo Color crayons. But what I often do when I travel is, you know, my work is layered. So I'll get, um, to some layers where it feels like it's, let me see, like something like this is a good example. So this is all paint at this point, and now I can come in with oil pastel and gold and whatever else I wanna to do to it. But I can, so when I'm traveling to simplify, I can just get it to this layer and not bring these other things and then save the piece to enhance or tweak when I get back. Um, this one already has oil pastel. This one I'm probably painting over. But yeah, the same with this one. This is all paint at this point and it needs some things. It just, 
you know, I've got to look at the composition and, but I can get things to a certain stage where there's things that need to be fixed and then do that when I get back to the studio. Um, same thing in the sketchbook, you know, if I'm doing my, these kind of things, like for example, this, this I did and then I'll come back through and see, you know, what do I want to do there? It's a different direction than these others. I wanted to play with kind of a Andre Durain brush strokes and see what where it goes. But I'll often paint one of these and then come back through and do the details later. And I, I have been lately dividing my um, work into an abstract sketchbook and a floral sketchbook. So, so I might even bring the floral sketchbook in case I want to do that, and then I'll, um, same thing here, you know, I could, I could, like this one I painted, and then I came back in with some white pen and did some details. Um, this one, I could hit it with some oil pastels. This one, I think, did I already do? Yeah, I already did some oil pastels and the bits, probably can't tell, but some little bits of gold pen. So this one doesn't have any gold pen. It might get a background on it, uh, you know, I don't know. And so, yeah, I'll just work that way and do what I can when I'm traveling um, and then do the finishing when I get home. So I hope that's helpful. People, uh, there are these things called watercolor brushes that have the water. I don't know if you've seen those. Let me grab one. I don't really use them. I have used them when I travel. Let's see if I can find them. Really need to do some organizing. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in another video, but they're they're like they have a water vessel to them, and then you can put water in the brush. But it's harder to control, and it's usually pretty easy to just get a little cup of water and use these. So that's what I do. Um, okay, I hope this is helpful. If you take trips this summer, thanks for watching.